at inorganic refrigerants. What are inorganic refrigerants? How do I know an inorganic refrigerant? Guys, please, let's listen now. Now, for a refrigerant that is inorganic, it begins with what? Seven, okay? It is designated by the letter, sorry, by, by number seven, followed by other numbers, all right? So when you see a refrigerant beginning with, uh, for example, you have R718, all right? This is what an inorganic word refrigerant, all right? So uh, they begin with what? Seven. Please don't forget that. They begin with what? Seven. Later on, I will show us how to calculate these. But please note that inorganic refrigerant begins with letter, with number seven. It's R700 or R17 or R43, okay? They begin with what? Let with number seven. Now, Also, please note that they fall under what? The natural refrigerant, okay? Now, let me talk about uh, refrigerant CO2. Refrigerant CO2. Okay. Talk about refrigerant what? Refrigerant CO2 now. All right. Now let's talk about refrigerant CO2. And please remember that refrigerant CO2 is an example of what? Inorganic word refrigerant. Now, what are the uh, features of refrigerant CO2? Number one, it has zero ODP. It has zero ODP. What is ODP? ODP is what? Ozone depletion potential. Ozone, ozone, ozone depletion potential. Is what? Ozone depletion word potential. That is the meaning of what? That. Number two. Number two, it's it's uh, global warming potential is one. Is global warming potential is one. That means that carbon dioxide is a safe refrigerant because it has zero ODP and two, its uh, potential is GWP is one. And number uh, uh, three is that it has a, it, it uses what, or let me say it has what, lower efficiency. It has lower efficiency. That is why most HVAC systems don't use carbon dioxide because it has what a very low efficiency. That means that that means that we can't compare CO2 to what to refrigerant 134 because CO2 has what lower what efficiency. All right. So that is for uh, CO2. Let me give you a uh, uh, small about ammonia gas. Ammonia ammonia now please remember again that ammonia is another type of inorganic refrigerant and if you remember i said about one it is what it is very toxic okay it is very toxic that is why today most companies don't use ammonia gas as a refrigerant because it is very toxic and number two it is flammable it is flammable it is flammable all right number three it is not compatible with copper not compatible not compatible 
with copper. Now, let me explain that. When you use ammonia gas with uh, a system that is made of copper, for example, if the compressor is made of copper, the ammonia will react with the copper to form copper oxide. I repeat that. If you use ammonia gas with a system that, has, uh, uh, that is made of copper, for example, the compressor, the ammonia will react with the, with, the, with the system to form what? Copper oxide. So we are saying that ammonia gas is not compatible with copper. Let me give us one more. Water. Water. And please, guys, note that these are some types of inorganic water refrigerant. Now, water can also be used as a refrigerant in some system. Number one, it is used in it is used in absorption system. Absorption system, which I will explain in our next classes, is using what absorption system and also water cannot be used it cannot be used where high working pressure where higher working pressure is required so these are some uh, drawbacks to using uh, water as a refrigerant all right so these are some examples and features of inorganic refrigerant later on i will show us how to calculate the refrigerant codes for carbon dioxide ammonia and water now for the mistress i was saying that uh mistress is uh when we combine two or more refrigerants to get a new refrigerant, they are called what? Mistures. And they are referred to as refrigerant blends. Number one, we have what we call the azeotropic, az azeotropic refrigerant or mistures. All right? Now, how do I know a refrigerant that is azeotropic? Number one, they begin with what? Five, all right? It's it refrigerant codes begins with five, all right? That's the first thing you must note, all right? They begin with what? Five. So that is for uh, azeotropic refrigerant. Now also, it has some properties. Number one, it is a stable mixture of what? Two or several refrigerants. It is a stable mixture of what? Two, a stable mixture of two or several refrigerants. All right? That's very important. It's a stable mixture of what? Two or several refrigerant that is as a, a zeotropic uh mixture it's a stable mixture of what two or several refrigerants now then the next thing you must notice that that it has a, a vapor and liquid phase all right it has what vapor and what liquid what phase which are not which are what identical i can say it has a its vapor and liquid phase are identical all right that means that it has what the same composition when in vapor and liquid phase it has it has identical composition when in vapor and liquid phase for example Example of azeotropic, we have a refrigerant 500. Okay, all right. This refrigerant is a mixture of what? Uh, um, 
So if you run 12, it comprises of refrigerant 12 and refrigerant 152. All right? And refrigerant 152. So these are the uh, refrigerants that makes up refrigerant 500. Also, we have a uh, refrigerant, refrigerant 502. All right? Refrigerant 502. This comprises of refrigerant 22 and refrigerant 115. So these are the refrigerants that mix up refrigerant uh, 502. All right, so next time you see a refrigerant that begins with uh, R5, just note that it is a refrigerant blends and also it is an azeotropic mixture. The next one we have here is, uh, is, is called a zeotropic refrigerant or mixtures. All right. This refrigerant it begins it begins with four. All right? With four. So when you see a refrigerant starting with four, just note that they are what? They are called a, they are called zeotropic mixtures. Okay? Now this one it is a uh, it differs in liquid so the liquid phase and vapor phase differs so it's or its composition differs in liquid and vapor phase but for azeotropic it is identical all right but in zeotropic they differ in liquid and uh, and what vapor phase the number two it does not boil at constant temperature it does not boil at constant constant what temperature all right unlike unlike azeotropic so these are the two uh, ways we can we can contrast between azeotropic mixtures and zeotropic mixtures. Examples of zeotropic is we have a refrigerant 404A, all right? Refrigerant 404A. It has it comprises of what? Uh, refrigerant one two five one. One two five and refrigerant one four three a and uh, refrigerant one three four a. So these are the refrigerant that is made up of in uh, refrigerant what four hundred. Also, we have a uh, refrigerant four o seven c four o seven c. All right, this comprises of refrigerant two three, refrigerant sorry three two, refrigerant one two five, and refrigerant one three four a. So these are the types of uh, zeotropic mixtures and azeotropic word mistress we have a lot of examples of zeotropic mistress and azeotropic mistress if you have passed through uh the may campus the uh the festo 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 lab in the may campus you must have come across uh, okay all right so the, the next on my list here is the hydrocarbons. Remember, I was saying that that uh, hydrocarbons are what they are the they are the organic they are the organic refrigerants. 
Okay? They are the organic water refrigerants. They are called the hydrocarbons. In your chemistry class, I know you, you have done this already in chemistry class. So all so most hydrocarbons falls under um, organic refrigerants. Okay? For example, you have, you have your ethane, your propane, your butane. They are all examples of organic refrigerants. Now, let me give us some, some um, properties of organic refrigerants. Number one, number one, it has, has good efficiency. They are very good. Number one, it has, they have good efficiency, all right? So, organic refrigerant has good efficiency. Number two, they have, uh, they have zero ODP. They have zero ODP, which is what we want for our refrigerant. So, they are very good. They have zero ODP. And two, number three, they have small values of global warming potential number three they have small values of global warming potential that is why they are very good then also they are compatible they are compatible with lubricating oil remember i was saying that uh, your refrigerant use what oil in fact we have what you call the oil the, the oil is is uh, mixed with the lubric with the uh, refrigerants all right so uh we are saying that organic refrigerants are compatible with the lubricating oil which is very good and please note that organic refrigerants are very reliable they are very reliable but but they are highly flammable but they are highly flammable that is the only drawbacks with uh, organic refrigerant they are highly flammable for example example we have a uh, we have butane or let me say we have a uh, refrigerant We have refrigerant, we have R600A, okay, we have R600, we have R290, all right, we have R170. So these are some examples of organic refrigerants these are some examples of organic refrigerants now refrigerant 600 a is called isobutane refrigerant 600 is butane refrigerant 290 is known as what um propane while refrigerant 170 is known as ethane as you can see again they are all hydrocarbons all right so we can use these as a refrigerant for our system in fact in fact my my fridge at home using uses what refrigerant 600a okay so these are some examples of organic refrigerants cfc's refrigerant the first thing we must note here is this, that CFC's refrigerants are synthetic refrigerants. Now, CFC stands for what? Stands for uh, carbon, fluorine, and chlorine. So when you see CFC, it means that it has carbon, fluorine and chlorine sometimes they call it what they call it what freons so they are known as freons okay that's for cfc 
So when you hear of the word freons as refrigerants, just note that they are CFC refrigerants. And please note that CFC refrigerants are being phased out. One, because they have IODP and GWP. So they are being phased out because they have IODP and IGWP. GWP stands for Global Warming Potential. ODP stands for Ozone Depletion Potential. That's one. Two. But two, uh, the chlorine, the chlorine has an excellent wear, or sorry, excellent what anti wear characteristics. Okay, so these are some uh, uh, CFC's properties. For example, example of CFC refrigerants are we have R11 we have R11 we have R12 we have R13 and the list goes on and on so these are some examples of CFC refrigerants so if your refrigerant at home is either refrigerant 11 or 12 or 13, just note that it is not safe for the atmosphere and they are being phased out. In fact, I'm not sure you will see any HVAC system that uses these refrigerants today because they are being uh, phased out. Please. HCFCs, HCFCs. Now, what are HCFCs? Now, when we say HCFCs, it means that it has what? Hydrogen plus it has uh, chlorine, it has a uh, fluorine. And it has what carbon. So these are what, or these are the compositions of what of uh, HCFC refrigerants. Now, HCFC refrigerant has um, they have low chlorine content than CFCs. Okay, it has low chlorine content than CFCs. Okay. That's the first thing you must note. So they are they are better than CFC, right? They are better than CFC because it has a low chlorine content than CFC. It's very important. Then number two, it has a low GWP, right? Which is which is lower than CFC, all right? So HCFCs is like an upgrade on CFC, all right? Now, uh, it has, it has 0 0.05 ODP. It has a uh, 0 0.05 ODP DP value, all right? So it has 0 0.05 ODP value, which is less than uh than uh cfcs all right also it is non flammable non flammable non flammable okay they are what non what flammable so they are okay they are okay but not the best examples of acfcs examples of acfcs we have a uh, refrigerant two two and uh, we have refrigerant one, one, two, three. 
These are some examples of refrigerants, of HCFC refrigerants. We also have what you call the um, refrigerant 1 to 4, and the list continues. So these are some examples of HCFC refrigerant. And please note that it has chlorine, but the chlorine content is lower than that on CFC refrigerant. So this is the features of uh, HCFC refrigerant. Let's look at HFC refrigerant. Again, remember that HFC is also under synthetic refrigerant. All right. Now, what are H HFCs? Yeah, hydrogen plus fluorine plus carbon. As you can see right here. It has no chlorine, so HFC refrigerants are better. Number one, they are non-flammable, so they are very good. They are they are um, they are uh, they have low low toxicity. Yeah, all right. See so that they are what non-flammable. It has it has zero zero. ODP and low GWP. Number three, it requires what? Minimum emission. Minimum emission. All right? All right? Minimum emission. Then number four, maximum efficiency. Good, good. Number four, maximum energy efficiency so this is a very good uh, refrigerant that we use examples of uh, hfc refrigerant examples we have a uh, refrigerant two three we have a um, refrigerant 410a so 410a falls under hfc2 because it's very good we have a refrigerant um, 134a so these are some examples of HFC refrigerant. And if you look at your refrigerators today, most of our refrigerators uses HFC refrigerant. And most of our ACs uses what? Refrigerant 410. So these are the, some examples of uh, refrigerant of HFC refrigerant. Refrigerant has a color code. How do you know a refrigerant color code? Our refrigerant that you see in the market has a color code on the cylinder. With the cylinder of the refrigerant, you will know the type of refrigerant in that cylinder. So number one, you can recognize a refrigerant by the color of the gas cylinder okay every refrigerant has different color coding for example refrigerant refrigerant 22 is um is light green it's light green we have a refrigerant um refrigerant one 134A is light sky blue, light sky blue. So many. Uh, refrigerant 404A is orange, 